When I was a history major, it was just a subject that really appealed to me. I really liked understanding where we'd come from. I loved kind of the narrative story aspects of it. And I became over time more and more aware that there were people left out of history. And I found that interesting or the bias that could be implicit in the stories that were being told. And so I found some of the complexity of history and who tells it and what stories get told interesting. Well, she's still a, a, a raging feminist. That hasn't changed. Um, but I do kind of tell the anecdotes of growing with her in the 70s and 80s with that, with, with her having that mindset. And for instance, Barbies being a real problem. Um, she hated that I was playing with them until she realized that I mostly like to cut their hair. <laughs> and so then then she was like, okay, fine. Like if that's what you're using them for. Um, but their bodies aren't normal, remember. Seeing that my mom, the primary breadwinner for the house for most of my youth, um, I would go to events that she was running where she was the authority and she was coaching and mentoring other people, other women. And I really saw her be very independent, you know, it, it, more so even after my parents got divorced. And so I think that all of that combined into me never really, there were other things that made me maybe think like I couldn't do something, um, but it definitely it wasn't along gender. It was highly intellectual. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was a rigor there. And, and so it seemed natural to be questioned based on my intelligence or abilities or wow. whatnot. And in fact, it took me a while to realize that there was any sort of difference at all because I was just so used to that. You know, you were you were equal and you would be expected to have equal capabilities in my house. Um, and so it just, yeah, it didn't even occur to me. A lot of people uh, don't think you can work in the tech job in a tech industry um, if you uh, don't have a tech degree. Don't. I don't, I don't think it's required, particularly because now when you look at technology companies, there are so many different roles, right? Like you could join sales, you could join HR and the technical degree, you we really wouldn't be leveraging in those roles. It would be about other skills that you bring in or you learn. Underrate what we bring to the team, right? Like I am in the room, not because I'm going to tell you, second guess your technical idea, I'm, go I'm in the room to point out that we don't have a solid plan about how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And like, what are the deadlines? And what are we going to communicate to that other team who expects us to have an answer at the end of this meeting? Yeah. I'm there with a slightly different perspective and that's valuable too. I ask myself on a fairly regular basis, like at least once a year, do I like what I'm doing? Do I like who I work with? Am I still learning and am I having fun and surviving? And I talk about this a little bit in the book. It can really change day to day, right? Like you could have a meeting where you just feel like, well, the, everything I said, people dismissed. Um, you could have um, months where it's hard because your kids are home because of a pandemic and you don't feel like you're balancing things well at all. Mm -hmm. um, so. I think that you do kind of both have to have this over, like you have kind of have to have th these overarching questions, mm -hmm. but I think you have to have like little gut check moments with yourself too. And sort of say like, Hey, like I haven't been sleeping well this month. And like, what should I do about that? Right? Like what, what, what little things are like important or sometimes big things, but like what things make me feel day to day, like I'm thriving or surviving mm -hmm. and do I need to tune tune the dial a different way? There can be a heavy, heavier penalty for women um, when we come across as not likable. And this is, you know, partially just like hundreds of years of society. We are expected to be the caretakers and mm -hmm. like it. Um, and 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 it's supposed to be about the we and not the I. And so a, a lot of this is just sort of coded in 
to how we think about each other. And we might not even, we may even notice as women that there's women that rub us wrong, that we don't find likable. It's sort of interesting to think about why that is. And, and me personally, I use humor a ton. Now this will not work for everybody. Um, part of it is that I just don't take things that seriously. And so I am not often burning and seething in anger, right? Like I'm just like, I'm mostly like, well, this, this is hilarious that we can't make a decision. Another tightrope too, right? If you make it all about the we, and then you never broadcast your accomplishments, exactly. then we can become invisible. Exactly. So, so yes, there's, there's, I mean, I'm hopeful one day these tightropes and, and the fact that we have to think about this gets less and less, but right now there is a certain amount of like figuring out what culture you're in and, and learning how to navigate it um, mm -hmm. and what recipe works for you. Instead of me being like, I've got to do it, I've got to do it all myself, I kind of flip it to like, what would a rich or what would a CEO, a CEO do? Like, what would someone who almost doesn't do things for themselves, right? Like, you know, like that's our, at least our sort of impression of these people in far off galaxies. They have people for that, right? Yeah. Or they know, right? And so it's kind of a trick for me to be like, to push myself to think about who would I ask for help? where would I find support instead of kind of making this up in my head, going it alone? If you had a magic wand, what would you like to use it for in the tech field? There's still kind of the supremacy of the technical knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I would love to democratize that more because I think actually it's part of why we have trouble hiring for diversity, right? Because if technical knowledge is the best knowledge and the pipeline for technical knowledge hasn't historically been that diverse, mm -hmm. then of course you're going to keep having this problem. So I think it's another way for us to address getting the diversity that we so need as we're developing um, and, and building great products. Again, diversity of thought, diversity of ideas is what can make actually technology much stronger um, by accepting that. So great, great points.